and again, it's easier with the, the table, the table was lower for me. I split my hands, and I start from the, as high as I can, and then I traction the table a little bit. So it looks like, oops, one way, one way. So I go, I go one, two, three, as many as I can, and then I just do a little bit of traction. And a lot will depend on, you know, how tall you are. You may have to do it from the side, that'll be more difficult. I'm going to put my hands into him, and I'm going to go deep, lateral, and down to the feet. As long as I'm in an appropriate area, appropriate that he's okay and he's comfortable with where I'm touching, I will use as much of my hands as possible. I don't, I don't want to do this unless I'm in a sensitive area, something that's making him uncomfortable. The more you touch, the more that it's slow and appropriate, the better he likes it. Um, People like touch. So I'm going to go right between the shoulder blades, and my hands aren't going to travel at all. I'm going deep into the table, lateral, and down to the feet all at the same time. I'm going to do one, I'm going to lean back and do two, lean back and do a third one here, and then I'm going to lose him in his lumbar lordosis. So I go down to a sacral base, and I'm going to push about 45 degrees into the table. Okay, and I'm going to lift my fingers up so that we all know what, I, what it is I'm trying to do. I'm not going to lay my fingers down on it to belt. Okay? And this table is a little high for me. I put the tension. This. Six or seven centimeters above. 
I'm going to put my fingers straight down into him and bring them together so I tint the skin. Okay, and your fingers, your fingers are not going to travel. They're not going to slide on the skin. So if I start about you know, six or eight centimeters away and I lean into him and I bring my fingers together, then I'm going to bring my fingers up. Go a little bit closer, same thing, down in, and together. And I'll do that two or three times. And I asked this old person who showed this, why do you think that works? And he said, he said well, maybe we're putting pressure at both ends of the muscle, and so the muscle spindle doesn't know how to react to it. If we put pressure near, a, you know, a, a, near the end of the muscle, we're going to get a reflex if we do it quick enough, right? So here, maybe because it's on the directional muscle, lets me know how to uh, react. I don't want to tell you that's true or not true. The technique works. Uh, all right, let's see what else I want to do. So I wanted to visceral for a It's a whole different idea. Wait, let me see what else is going on here. OK, all right. Um, you can review the next. So I'm done with you for a little while. Uh, let's talk about visceral technique. So let me just put up a different presentation. She is patient, 
for there are eight of them in a van, and the van rolls. And her, no one's wearing a seatbelt, much like my experiences so far. Um, I don't think I've worn a seatbelt the whole time. I tried once in a cab and like didn't come, and I go, all right, it's not happening. So um, eight people, no seatbelts, the van rolls, and they, uh, a helicopter took her and her eight-year-old son to Jackson Memorial Hospital. And so she's on a stretcher strapped in here, and Gerald is in a stretcher here. And he's crying for his mother. He arrived at the hospital dead. So his mother is the whole time reaching back to try and touch him, and she can't touch her son as he's dying, as he arrives dead in the hospital. Now you know why she has a shoulder neck problem. She was twice as strong as I was. But there was so much emotion and energy tied into that. Trusting me as a doctor, whatever her experience at the hospital, who knows? Because she's black and I'm white. Who knows what the problems are? I needed her to accept something before I could do something else. So you are a whole person. You're much more than that. And you, you're a very good man. Because no one got up here but you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, this is a long presentation, so what I'm going to do is go through some anatomy very quickly so that I can get to some techniques. Uh, there are some concepts in visceral manipulation. There are concepts of mobility, which is what we're going to discuss now. And that is, when we think of mobility, traditionally we think of joints. How should my legs move, my arms, my head, your low back, they're mobile. You're abdomen, your visceral things, they move also. And when they don't move, you have pathology. And when they move normally, we can get them to move a little more to try and get some motion to replace something we don't have. Uh, motility is, we're not going to, we won't talk about it. It's some sort of in, uh, inherent motion we believe that we feel in the organs. And it's a uh, more complicated concept than for this morning. Um, so I'm going to skip through the mobility stuff. But mo mobility is what I want to talk about. What makes your... Now, the topic is low back. So I'm going to look at abdomen, visceral mobility. What can I do to the abdomen to treat the low back? So if these things are supposed to move, what contributes to its motion? There's an intracavitary pressure. It changes as you breathe in and out. There are articulations. What, what articulates in the abdomen? Lots of stuff. Lots of things. Things have to move. When things are moving that shouldn't, we have a problem. When things don't move that should, we have a problem. When you have surgery done to your belly and you get adhesions and a loop of bowel sticking to a loop of bowel, you get pain when you're eating. You go back to the surgeon, I'm getting this pain now, I had the surgery. The surgeon says, you're fine. What does you're fine mean? You're fine means I did the surgery to you, you recovered from it, and that part of you is okay. They're not, they're not equipped to do the musculoskeletal part of it. That doesn't, fashion doesn't mean anything to them. Um, a lot of reproductive problems. If you have surgery down here, your floating tubes are not free to move around. These women are becoming fertile. So things are supposed to move. There's a double layer system. You have a double layer system in your peritoneum. It's about 60 cc's of fluid that lubricates it. You have a ligamentous system. Your organs are hanging so that they're not moving. Your liver is held very tightly in place by right and left triangular ligaments. And uh, your intestines are held by the root of the mesentery and then they're free to wobble around. The wobble has to happen. Why do your intestines have to move around? What do they do? This is the first thing I can think about. What's supposed to happen here? Peristalsis. In order for peristalsis, you need your intestines are supposed to move around. Your liver doesn't do that. If your liver flops around, it tears, you bleed out, you die. If your spleen flops around or enlarges, it fractures and you die. Uh, the intracarotary pressure can be changed by the amount of hydration and different uh, other medical conditions. You have, you know, 
we call it being dry, if you're out fluid or if you have ascites, you mix edema, these things affect how your gut's move. Your mesentery system and your mental system lubricates things. Your mesentery system suspends things. I'm going to go a little fast. Uh, what types of things can restrict the normal motion in the abdomen? Adhesions. How do you get adhesions, sir? In your, in your stomach, how would you get adhesions? That's one way. Very good. This is a bonus round. Yeah. Infection, good. Injuries. Injuries, that's it. Three. That's it. That's it. Injury traumas. Okay, you can sustain an injury and recover. You can sustain an injury and something is sticking to something else you're not moving. And these are all very treatable. Um, sometimes just one treatment. Uh, these ligaments can be lax. They can not be as supportive as they should be. You can have visceral spasms. If you have a gallbladder that's irritated, you have a kidney that has a stone, it starts to irritate things by proximity. It um, starts to recruit other tissues. Let me skip one till you. Uh, okay, now we're just doing this in an hour and a half. It's not a visceral course. So I'm going to show you some techniques. Uh, this is going to be my... Um, This is going to be my part of contraindications. It's going to be heavy pressure. But everything, you know, here's, am I hurting you now? And then there's, you know, neurosurgery. I'm going to hit you. And so, uh, when you're doing visceral manipulation, it's the same way. I'm going to show you some techniques. And it can be done mild, moderate, or really strong. Uh, so if it's a patient that you're thinking about that has other areas that are making you nervous, the simple answer would be send them to their MD and you say, I would like to do some heavy manipulation to their abdomen. Is that okay? If their MD says okay, then you're, you're okay with it. Um, if they say no, then uh, then don't do it. At some point, you, you become comfortable with it. Um, that's, the safe, that's the safest way. Rather than, I don't want to tell you medical conditions that might be things that you're not supposed to diagnose. So, Chiefly to two things. They respond 
is cell death. Cells die, they send out um, signals. It's like having someone run down the rooms of, this, of, a, of the hallway and knocking on all the doors. Okay? They respond to cell death and to proprioception. So I can take a normal bowel, put some pressure on it in a certain way, and I can create a lot of information going back to the spinal cord that may override some of these back spasms. Can't compete with it. It's too big a signal. And it may allow you to do your other treatments. So you can use visceral to go backwards to treat the back problem. You can do visceral to treat a motility visceral problem. Uh, by the American, American Medical Association's um, statistics, they estimate one in four to one in five adults. So it's at least 20% of, of adults who have irritable bowel. Yeah, is that popular here? Is that popular is that here? Um, irritable bowel, what is you know what irritable bowel is? Irritable bowel means you have diarrhea or constipation, one or the other or both, plus pain. And in the United States it means that we did a colonoscopy. I don't know if that's being done here. I saw one patient already and they didn't do it. But we do a colonoscopy to make sure you don't have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or cancer. Okay, those are some other chief reasons. So if it's that common, your back pain patients who are already decompromised, there's a good chance that their bowels are not what they should be. And some many places the bowels are very often home. So let's look at some general anatomy for that and then see what we can do. This is just showing uh, the large intestine here in the reverse spleen. What you need to know from this picture is that there's no air in here. It's all stuff. And it all has to move against other stuff. So if we're going to be concerned mostly with uh, low, if we're going to be concerned mostly with low back, I'm just going to go right to some techniques you can do. And I've already told you. Don't do, I may do that technique a lot to people with low back pain, but I don't look at people with low back pain and go, we're going to need to manipulate your cold insert. But I do it. It's very tolerable. Um, let's just look at the other general anatomy here. A bunch of little squiggles, small intestine, large intestine. It's fixed here in the cecum. It's fixed against the, the, the internal wall here at the end. Panic flexure, slowing flexure, and it's fairly free until it goes down to the right. This area should all be free to move. If one of these is touching another one and you're at ease, the person's going to have pain. And you can, you can treat it. The visceral or small intestine is different. This, we know where it's going to be. What's right behind this here? On the other side. That's as close to the low back as you can get on the right side. The other thing that I like about these techniques is they are, you get your benefit now. Understand that you may get your complaints now also because it's heavy. That's why I said I do nice and I do this in the middle and then I end with some happy things. Okay, but they may feel uncomfortable that you change some things. So, this is where I expect it to be. It's going to affect not just the left low back. The effects are going to go down, the effects are going to go up. These techniques, I think of them as regional techniques. It's not something that just goes to one area you want to do, like I look at doing a spinal manipulation, something very soft, and I mobilize one or two segments. I'm going to mobilize down here, and you're going to see your eyes start to move, your toes start to move. Um, it's very tolerable. I'm not going to do anything sudden. I stick to my rule. I'm not going to do anything sudden or unexpected. In the moment you tell me to slow down, I will slow down. The only time I do something unexpected is when I mobilize. Before I do it, I say, I'm, I'm going to move this. Is that okay? I never, never do it any other way. So, let me...